Now, we're only going to read one verse. You can stand if you want to or stay seated. It's going to be a, a short verse, okay? <laughs> Look at Judges in the 21st chapter. Judges chapter 21. Very last chapter of the book of Judges. Okay, Judges 21, verse 25. Judges 21, verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Mm. May be seen. Very dangerous. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your great grace. Lord, we thank you for loving us and keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for the own purpose assembly. We come, Lord, to help and to be helped. We come, Lord, to praise your name in song and testimony, mm. message, prayer, teaching of thy word. Lord, that we may learn of thee, that we may cast our cares upon thee. Lord, that we may uh, help pray for others as others pray for us. And God, that we may gain strength and knowledge and grow in grace. <clears throat> and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Lord, as always, we ask that you anoint physically, that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh, but above all, Lord, nor spiritually may preach thy word in the power of the Spirit, Amen. tying together the loose ends that fill the void we leave because of our inability. <coughs> Let thy word go out freely. We love you and we thank you. Lord, you add to and take away from the message. Let us do thy will. In thy name anoint, dear Jesus. Amen. 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 Out of verse 25. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Amen. What we want to preach on tonight is <clears throat> be right in God's eyes. Amen. Yeah. Be right in God's eyes. Yeah. And without going and trying to prove, I think all of us can see this in today's world, as much as we that are alive has ever seen it. People do right in their own eyes. We were talking the other day, talking to our Sandy and I told my brother-in-law too that there's a lot of not respect for authority anymore. Not respect for teachers. Not respect for policemen. Not respect for Christians. In a, not everyone, of course, but you get the idea. Yeah. You read about it in the paper all the time. You see about it. But we're not taught. I thought we're not really taught. The young generation, I mean, are not really taught to respect. In a lot of homes, they're not really taught that. It's true. Everything hinges around them. They give you their schedule that you follow. Mm -hmm. uh, they're <clears throat> not really taught respect to the mom and dad a lot of times. Come in schools and before you all retire, your hands were bound in a lot of ways and what you can do to someone. <laughs> How you can punish or how you can, what you can say and what you can do. Mm -hmm. So again, there's a few that takes that and runs with it. So they don't have respect for the mom and dad. I sat in a hospital and this man a few years ago in the waiting room. This kid kept kicking his mom. Well, it was Sandy, I'll, if that happened too, but I'll take Sandy. She worked in the school system. And a woman brought her child in uh, to arrest her for <coughs> kindergarten. And the, the child kept kicking her mom in the chin every time mom said something. Finally, the principal said, don't you get tired of that? <laughs> oh, no. They'll stop. 
I saw one in a, in a waiting room one time. Kept your mom, I thought, let me borrow that kid for about three minutes. <laughs> it will not enjoy kicking anymore. Amen. I like the Andy Griffith show, the one for the a spoiled kid. And at the end of it, the, the parent realized, the father realized what was going on. And Andy said, we got a woodshed out back. <laughs> Old fashioned. Old fashioned woodshed. And the man said, Old fashioned woodshed? <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> so I'm not, uh, obviously, you don't hurt kids or be on kids by all means. But we need to have authority. You cannot do what's right in your own eyes. Most people cannot handle that. It gets out of control. Amen. In some way, in a lot of ways, the world is out of control. I've talked to other people who worked in the school and they said, I remember a man said one time, said, these kids are 15 years old and their life is already completely out of control. At 15 years old, or 16 years old. So, I thought about mankind's failure and where they begin. Mankind's failure and where, you see, when you go against the basic laws of God, it never works. It may work for a little while. It may sound good for a little while. We see it across the nation when crime is not punished. We see, uh, amen, that it causes more crime. It causes disaster. It causes businesses to move out. It causes all kinds of things. It may sound good for a while, but it doesn't work. Amen. In 17 and 6, we find that too in Judges. If you go back to starting in chapter 17, at the end of chapter 16, the last judge has died. Uh, Samson has died, and now there's no more judges. From 17 on to 21, there's no more judges in the book of Samuel. Huh? And uh, a lot of things begin to happen. Uh, it was a posty. I uh, falling away. I uh, uh, broke out uh, in 17 uh, and 6. It said, In those days, uh, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Uh, in chapter 18, uh, in those days, there was no king uh, in Israel. Uh, amen. Uh, and then also, uh, uh, over in 19, uh, he said, It came to pass in those days uh, where there was no king in Israel. Uh, hey, uh, I said, It kept uh, uh, mounting up. Uh, it kept mounting up. Uh, and they kept getting deeper and deeper uh, in sin. When there is no leadership, mankind fails. Amen. Any company that don't have <coughs> leadership fails. Amen. Any school that doesn't have leadership <laughs> fails. Amen. Any church that doesn't have leadership fails. Any home that doesn't have leadership fails. It's against the laws of God. It's against the nature of God. It's against His commandments. Hey, God set up commandments. God set up do's and don'ts. God set up heads. Amen. Those that follow those that help. God set up a system. And when it's not following, failure always follows. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes it takes a while, Amen. but it will follow. Yeah. Amen. It will follow. Uh, a nation who forgets God will uh, be turned into hell uh, uh, when there's no king uh, in Israel. Uh, uh, it could be uh, uh, to do this thing has always been and always will be disastrous uh, when we don't follow God. It always has been and always will be disaster, And we can see that in America today. Amen. Big time. And I'm not trying to be political, but surely anybody honest in your heart can see a falling apart Amen. in so many ways, in so many cities, mm -hmm. and so much <laughs> crime, and so many things, and it's falling apart. Why? Because we're not following the laws of God. And so many doing everything right uh, in their own eyes. Uh, hey, uh, it doesn't work in a church. Uh, you got to have Lord, uh, Randy been teaching out of 1 Corinthians. Paul went to a church. Uh, amen. That was out of order. Uh, they was out of order. Uh, they thought they were doing good, I guess, and what? But Corinthians church was out of control. Paul said, here's some rules you're going to have to live by. I've seen churches and assembly out of control. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? They fail. Yeah. Yeah. They fail. 
It's highly controlled. Other people say, oh, you can't put control. <laughs> you, don't, you can't have rules. I said, what do you mean you can't? No, you don't need rules. Just let every man do what he feels right. Well, if every man followed God, that would work. Every man <laughs> don't follow God. I said, and I'll use this example. I said, so you would put a, a kid that got saved, uh, 11 years old, that got saved. You believe they got saved if they say that you all sure. I said, so you think that would be head deacon? Oh no, no, you guys you, you gotta have rules. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta have rules. The Bible has rules. Yeah, sure. Sure. Has rules who to set up, how to set up. Uh, amen. Uh, but when you do everything uh, in their own eyes, uh, every man did right uh, in his own eyes, uh, not the eyes of God. From 17 on, uh, judges is really disastrous. Yeah. yeah. Because there's no more judges, mm -hmm. no kings. Amen. So Samson was the last judge. So none of the New Testament writers wrote for themselves. They wrote what God Amen. had given them. Mm -hmm. Inspired Word of God. And I always remember it. It's easier way to remember that about Timothy, 2 Timothy, and, and it's, it just happened to be 316. I just like that. Like John 3.16. Uh, well, this is just important. Uh, amen. Uh, just important uh, of the Scripture. Uh, hey, uh, it, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. Uh, for some reason, I always remember it that way. All Scripture mm -hmm. is given by inspiration of God. It is good and prof is profitable for doctrine. You say, oh, there shouldn't be doctrine. We shouldn't talk about doctrine. Read the Bible. <laughs> For doctrine, mm -hmm. you say, born, the only way you can be saved is by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's doctrine. Sure. Amen. You need that doctrine. Right? Sure. You need that. Amen. The most basics of all. You got to have a doctrine because others uh, are doing what's right in their own eyes. Uh, well, you can be saved all different ways. Uh, as I said the other night, it's only through Jesus Christ. No one in heaven, uh, no one in earth, uh, no one under the earth uh, was found worthy. Uh, everybody in there said, We not. Uh, there been one from the tribe of Judah and slain. Uh, amen. But he lived. And there's no other way except through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only way death can be defeated. That's right. Amen. That's why good works cannot save you. Good works ain't saved you because you don't go through the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Giving all kinds of money away doesn't save you because it doesn't go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Living good cannot save you because it doesn't go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything. He's the only one that has the keys. He's the only one that has salvation. He's the only way and by Him and through Him. No no other name, Amen. no other event, no, no other thing can <laughs> save you Amen. except by the name of Jesus. Amen. Salvation and no other. Bottom line. Nothing else can defeat death. Amen. Your good works can't defeat death. <clears throat> Your good works can't make you rise up again <clears throat> after you die. Amen. All the money you give can't make you rise up again from a dead body, a decayed body. Uh, hey, uh, all the things you might do uh, and all the good you may be cannot raise you up. Only Jesus. Amen. 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 Only Jesus. Amen. All the New Testament writers, they didn't Amen. write on their own. Uh, they didn't see things in their own eyes. Uh, Amen. They wrote according to the Word of God. Uh, and they set rules in place uh, and things in place. Uh, hey, uh, it's not my way. It's what God says. Amen. Uh, it's not what. And, and today, and I said this quite a few years ago, even more true today, there's some verses you get up and read and make people mad and you don't even have to come in on the verse. Right. <laughs> How dare he read that? <laughs> How dare he read that. Yeah. He's reading from the Bible without yeah. any, <laughs> without even trying to interpret. Amen. Because people want to be right in their own eyes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you, everybody wants to be right in their own eyes. Always start their doctrine off this way. Well, I just think. I 
I just believe. And I tell you all the time, don't say that to me. Say the Bible says in verse so and so, chapter so and so, book so and so, then we'll talk about it. Amen. I don't want to be right in God's eyes. The Pharisees in the days of Christ, they was right in their own eyes. And one of the most amazing things in the Bible about the Pharisees to me, of all the things in there and all the wrongs they did, when Jesus, amen, was on trial. They didn't want to go into the judgment hall where the Gentiles were. They said, we don't need to be defiled. <laughs> they're lying. They're killing. <laughs> do all this through false accusation. And they don't want to be defiled by being around the Gentile. <laughs> that be all. <laughs> that blows my mind. But we have, it's the same thing repeats today. Uh, hey, uh, uh, people will not accept uh, uh, their sins. Uh, they do so many things. Uh, there is out and out sin, uh, absolute sin. Uh, I'm talking about people uh, that attend church a lot of times, uh, do things uh, that are out and out sin. Uh, they, uh, and yet, uh, uh, they uh, 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 act like it's a Pharisee. Uh, they're just as righteous as it can be. Why? Because they're right and they're right. in their own eyes. Yep. Right in your own eyes. Yep. And Steve will know, I said this before, he, he reminded me sometimes, said, when somebody's wrong like that, understand, they think they're right. Yep. <laughs> they have convinced themselves right. they're right. They told themselves they're right. They give the excuse. The Pharisees thought they were right. They refused to listen to Jesus Christ. They refused. Even after he rose from the dead, they gave money to the soldiers and said, look, you say that they come and you all fell asleep and we'll protect you, but take the money. Hey, there's a lot of preachers taking the money today and giving the wrong message. Amen. Yeah, that's true. So true. I want to be right <clears throat> in God's eyes. Yeah. I want to be right in God's eyes. Yeah. Romans 1 and 18, we're going to close. It said, For the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's a whole just like the days of Christ. And in fact, the second coming, I, I ran the big teaching on the second coming, but when will it come? When we repeat, as far as I'm concerned, as it was in the days of Christ, when we repeat uh, that way, uh, when the Pharisees, uh, the temple was very busy, uh, it was a very busy place, uh, but it's all self, uh, right? It was about self. Look at me. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, ministry in the world today that preached the Lord come to gate wouldn't dare go preach to whatever we got tonight. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But I think what Jesus taught down at the nursing home uh, last Tuesday, Tuesday week, the woman at the well is an amazing lesson to me. Yeah. This woman was not a good woman morally. She had five husbands living with one man. She was Samaritan, had a lot of issues with the Jews, and the Jews, of course, had issues with Samaritans. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he's going from Judea to Galilee. Samaria's in between. The, the land of Samaria's in between. Only about 30 miles. Sychar, where he went, he's only about 30 miles or so above Jerusalem, but it's in between. Most Jews would go across Jordan up the uh, east side of Jordan by ground. They, wouldn't, they didn't want their dust on their feet from the land of Samaria. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming down to set up a kingdom that cannot be moved. Amen. He said, I must need go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean he couldn't go any other way. He had someone to see. He did all that to go to one person. Amen. Mm -hmm. I bet we got hundreds of preachers, thousands of preachers, not willing of that to go to one. Yeah. And not only that one person, it was not a good moral person. Oh. She was not. 
Another good moral person. And on top of that, she's a Samaritan that the Jews have no dealing with because, uh, amen, they had intermingled, they had intermarried uh, with a lot of Gentiles. They had a religion, uh, part God and part uh, uh, idols and everything else. Uh, hey, uh, uh, they wouldn't, uh, uh, the, the Jews would have no deal. But Jesus went to one. Amen. Mm -hmm. And she accepted him. Then she told others. And they accepted. Never cut God short what one can do. Amen. Never be so high up that you're not willing to go to one. Not willing to invite the ones that are not uh, uh, the they're not the one that can be so much. I heard somebody say one time, somebody uh, had left the church. And they said, boy, I hate to lose him. Do you know how much money he gave? <laughs> I hate to lose them. They have good talent. Well, I hate to lose good talent too. Let me tell you, every soul is important. Amen. Every soul is important. Now, if somebody goes somewhere else to wash up all that, that's all right. But if they go and not go anywhere, I don't want to lose one. The poorest of the poor. In fact, all my ministry, I, I try to say and try to uh, lead by example uh, that everyone can feel a part of the house of God. I never want to separate those that say want to give more uh, than those that can't give. Amen. I never want to separate those that can have a lot of heads down than those that don't. Everyone's important. That once a marriage woman was important to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I think, wow. Exactly. Who should we say is not important? But we live in America like judges. This is the end of judges. And it summarizes judges pretty good. They just kept getting deeper and deeper in sin, apostasy. <laughs> then the judges, no more judges after Samuel, I mean after Samson, and it just fell apart. Amen. It was horrible. I can see this. I really can. I'm not just, I don't want a soapbox. We see America falling apart. We really do. And I'm not just saying that. Amen. We see America falling. You cannot go against the laws of God and everybody do right in their own eye. It's God rules our right. Amen. That's right. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. <coughs> thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your love. We pray, God, that we've done thy will. <coughs> and God, that we'll have a desire to do right in your eyes. And all of us, Lord, have a desire to do right in your eyes. So we appoint the message, we pray. In thy name we ask. Amen. 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 Lord, we sing you a song. Amen. Amen.